What up, players? Warbots to have this mug. Welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint female skin. Here is our finished model. This is what she's gonna look like, and um, I'm really happy with how she came out, the skin tone, and I hope these tips and techniques work for you as well as they have worked for me. I'll put a link in the video description for the article on how to get the um, to the walkthrough of the guide that I followed. It's from Kingdom Death's How to Paint a Preacher Advanced Painting Guide. Uh, it's really helpful for me. And yeah, I hope this video is helpful for you whenever you're going to be attempting to paint a female model that is not a zombie or anything. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. All right, what is up, players? Let's get started painting the skin tone for this female model. The reason I decided to do this is because female skin tone is, is very different from male skin tones and in the fact that it's usually softer, lighter, and we, we want to really make sure we get a good colored skin tone whenever you paint a female model. We're also going to come out looking really uh, harsh, let's say. Okay, so the colors we're going to use, I'm actually using the painting guide, the advanced painting guide from Kingdom Death, their website. They have a great color scheme that I think works the best out of any ones I've ever tried, so I'm going to share it with you today. The first thing you're going to need more than anything else is a wet palette. That's parchment paper, a slice of parchment paper over some water in a container. The container doesn't have to be plastic. I'm using uh, this plastic clamshell, but it definitely helps. You also want a brush specifically for the mixing of your paints so that uh, you can really put a lot on it and you don't have to worry about it getting uh, being too much and too heavy for your models. The colors we're going to use are Acadian Flesh Tone, Kislev Flesh, Vallejo Model Color Dark Flesh, Vallejo Model Color Deck Tan, oh, and P3's Ordic Olive. So basically it's really Dark Flesh and the two GW colors. The Deck Tan and the P3 Ordic Olive are going to be other colors that we add to it. But the main color we're going to use, actually, since this is a larger model, let's do two drops. And then we'll do a little bit of each of these colors. What I like to do also is have, have my paints separated, kind of like a Venn diagram sort of thing. And then we slowly meet them together in the center. until we find the balance that we want, so. Keep the rest of this far away. This is why having a wet palette will definitely help because the colors you mix onto this wet palette will stay usable for a surprisingly long amount of time. So you can add from either, or I, I, either three, any of the three, let's say. Either is if you have two, yeah. And it looks like the skin tone I'm getting is a little bit too yellow, so I'm gonna add a bit more Kislev Flesh. The first time I did this, I felt like I was wasting paint, but you're really not wasting the paint because like I said, I could go away, watch some TV, and come back in two or three hours, and it'll still look really good. All right, so it says add just a touch of deck tan, so we're gonna see if we can add like a half a drop here. Oops. To the side. Right, let's mix it up and do a little bit more. There we go. And just a little bit of this Ortic Olive. Now Ortic Olive is green, so <laughs> you want to make sure you 
do not put too much of that in there. And deck 10. I apologize for my neighbor's yappy dog. It's funny, uh, Duke is sitting next to me. It's like he's gotten used to hearing her barking outside in the, in the yard. All right, so like I said, we do not want that to be the same brush that we use. So I'm gonna switch brushes out and start applying this paint. Now, if I was a smart painter, what I would be doing is base coating a, or painting this base coat onto a model that was primed in white. Fortunately, I got this model that was already primed in black. I didn't want to go back over it, so I just thought, nah, that's fine. That does mean if you're using a model that's been primed in black, Fem feminine skin, female skin is so like soft that you don't want to see the black showing through the the first coat. So whereas if I was doing a white primed model, I might be able to get away with one application. I'm probably going to need to do two applications of this color. So um, the first time you put the paint down, especially if you've got a black undercoat like I do, it's going to need some time to, to set and dry so that you can really see how many more additional coats you're going to need to put on. As a general rule though, I like when you're doing something as sensitive and as, as touchy as female skin, as a rule I like to go over it at least two times, sometimes possibly even three, because you, you know you want your paint to be thin, thin down with water, and you know you want to apply it smoothly and evenly. So you can see over here, it's already starting to separate on the left leg. So um, we're going to just continue just moving the paint around, and uh, we're gonna leave it there and gonna hit these other areas on our model's body, but we'll come back and when that first layer is dry, we'll kind of see where the foundation is for putting on our second layer of paint. See, if I was doing this, I used to put all my paint just on onto the plastic and add some water to the actual paint uh, pile. I, I never used to use a a wet palette when I was first starting out in the hobby and I would waste so much paint the paint would almost immediately dry as soon as I put it on the wet palette. This first layer looks like it's going to be pretty splotchy. Splotchy is not so bad. Uh, you definitely do not want splotchiness because it tricks you into thinking you have to add more paint. But really, if I added more paint, it would just make an even bigger mess. So I'm just going to take as smooth of a layer as I can and just very evenly distribute it and put it down on the model and let it dry. Just let it dry so that you can come back to it. Most of us who paint, we're kind of perfectionists. We don't want to just leave something the way it is. We want to fix it. We want to make it perfect so we don't have to do any repeat. But really, for something like this, you, you need to do it over and over. Multiple applications.
You want to keep checking your model to make sure there's no um, pools of paint, that it's not pooling in any area. The worst is if it pools in the, in the corners where the surface area meets um, something else, like if the leg, where the leg met the skirt, you don't want it to pool there. Where the hand, fingers meet the leg, you don't want it to pool there. So you're just taking your brush and you're smoothing over everything. Yeah, no matter what, it's gonna be really splotchy, so I'm just gonna keep moving. This is from uh, the Reaper Bones line. It's a giant miniature, I believe, some kind of giant. The reason I'm using it is because I'm, hopefully, when I'm finished with it, I wanna enter it in a painting competition the local store is having. We'll see how well this goes and if I wanna do that or not. I also chose it because I really like the the little bit larger scale lets you do a lot more with your paint. Right, so, looks pretty splotchy, right? It doesn't look all that great right now. Uh, this is the very first application. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna let it sit for a couple hours or so. And then when we come back, it should be dry enough so that I can add a second coat. And uh, the great thing is, like I said, my, my paint will still be here because of the, the magic of wet palette technology. So I'm gonna go off and maybe grab a bite to eat. We'll come back. Hopefully my neighbor's dog will have tired itself out and gone inside and we will uh, continue by painting on a second coat of paint onto our, onto our model here. So I'm back a couple hours later. We can see that the paint has dried pretty nicely and um, I'm going to add a second layer now and my wet palette is still holding strong and it's actually about I want to say maybe five or six hours later and the paint is still uh, usable so we're going to continue working with it as I'm painting my second layer I'm being ever more careful to keep the paint where I want it to go and uh, in this case, I'm gonna start looking at keeping it in the highlighted areas. So in the upper area of the leg here, you can see I'm leaving the darker shade in the bottom half, bottom part of the leg, the part that would be in shadow a little bit. The back of the calf here, the front of the leg where the bone structure is really Kind of modeled to push forward. Hit the knee there, front of the leg. Great thing about having your wet palette right there is that if your color feels like it's too dark or too light, all you have to do is add a little bit of the appropriate color and it should fix everything right up. This is the same recipe that I used obviously for the Kingdom Death model that I started painting a while back.
Now we're going to hit the hand here. And the arm. A lot of the bones stuff, the reaper bones stuff, is, I think, hit or miss. Some of it just looks a little bit too cartoony for my taste. I mean, everybody's different, you know, so something that's miss for me could totally be a, a blockbuster for you guys, and vice versa. I think I've just decided that I don't really care for the cartoony, more uh, animated style overall and if this wasn't one that I was doing for a painting competition I probably wouldn't care so much for it all right we're gonna let that dry and then we're kind of come back and I'm gonna add a little bit more of Vallejo's deck tan and a little bit more of Vallejo's dark flesh to bring the color up a, a, just a tad bit. And uh, we'll do our final highlight then. Okay, added a little bit of deck tan and dark flesh and actually add a little bit more Kislev flesh as well. So let's see how this works. Before I'm even painting this highlight onto the model, I'm looking to see where the light is most naturally hitting it. And then I just want to very lightly feather it. This is a little bit uh, lighter than maybe I would like, but that's okay. We're gonna stick with it and see how it works. This is gonna be a very, very fair giant. The great thing about doing highlights is you get to really choose and decide and kind of tell the viewer where you want that light source to be. We don't want her to be too pale though, we don't want her to be like an, like an albino. So, we're still just kind of tracing the outline where the skeletal bone structure is most prominent. The easiest part to follow these lines is over here, the left leg is a really nicely, beautifully stretched out so you can find where the, the lines are and you can follow them really easily.
we get something like that. Now we're going to work on the back. And the tricky part is going to be here, the upper body and the face. So my thoughts are I'm going to want to really stay close to the edges of all of the larger surface areas and try not to get this pale color too much on the, on the, in the lower recessed areas. Tricky part is trying to get here. So she is, yeah, she ended up a little bit pale, but that's okay because we're gonna do a little bit of a shade in just a second. So we're gonna let that dry and then when we come back, we're gonna start working on the shade. So now we're gonna look at shading our model and the way we do that is we turn our colors that we've been using. I'm gonna add a little bit more Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh to balance out the colors. And then we're gonna add more of P3's Ordic Olive and umbral umber we're going to be trying to hit this as a glaze though and that means that we're going to add lots of uh, water to it you can also use um, lamian medium any kind of mixing medium i'm going to try to stick in the center here of our palette So with the, with the shading, and uh, I saw this on the, the Kingdom Death website, you want to make sure you don't put too much of that dark flesh in there because you do not want it to go yellow. You'll notice that the dark flesh has a yellowish tinge to it. So we want to make sure that we don't have a, a yellow skin model. I'm going to add a little bit of this umbral umber now and I'm gonna make sure that I also have some some water on the tip of my brush ready to go. You don't want it to be too concentrated. You want to mix it up as much as you can. It's basically just taking your your paint, the skin color that we did, and bringing it down a step. Same thing here with this green Ortic Olive. And that is your shading color. water to make it into a glaze. Again, if you don't know what a glaze is, a glaze is separate from a wash because a glaze is basically just water or, you know, your, your medium with a little bit of the paint inside. The goal is you don't want too much pigment. You don't want it to change the color. You basically want to paint it onto the model and see it almost barely change the the coloring.
You'll notice that the shade here is getting into the the shadow next to the uh, cloth, and that is something I'm gonna have to fix later. For now, it's okay though. I just want to experiment and see where where those shadows look most natural to you if you find that um, you're making a mistake just go back to the middle area of your wet palette and find the original skin color that you're working with you can very easily touch it back up like I think I made my foot too dark here so I'm gonna just add a little bit of that original skin color there here as well on the left leg and almost immediately it solves your problems. This is a much more effective way of getting uh, let's say depth and variation to the skin color than taking something like Raeklin Flesh Shade and just drenching the entire model with it. And then having to go back later and fix or re-highlight up the lighter areas. Doing this method of selective shading will also help you to train your eye to see where the shadows are supposed to fall on a model. So remember, yeah, your paint is not going to be very thick at all. It's almost going to be like barely there. I'm going to go under the armpit now. Fill in a little bit of that muscle. And the last part is here on the face. I'm gonna hit the hairline. A little bit of the brow. Under the cheek. And on the left side under the cheek. You don't want it to look gaunt. The model itself looks like it's sculpted to be quite healthy looking in the face. There. So you see the kind of transition there from the, the lighter skin color to the darker. Bit of highlighting here on the leg and really you can do two three coats of the glaze if you want applications it's really limited only by how uh, how how much depth and how much how much you really want to go in with the coloring Okay, very 
good. What's next on our list? I think that's about it. Or that's really at this stage the, the most you can do. It looks like you paint the base color, right? Which is the Caden Flesh Tone, the Kislev Flesh. A little bit of deck tan, a little bit of uh, Ortic Olive. Then you uh, highlight by adding in progressive amounts of deck tan. And then you shade, like you can see under the, the buttocks there, with the opposite by adding Umbral Umber and a little bit more Ortic Olive. And then from there, it's just going back and forth and uh, mixing and matching, finding the color combinations that, that you like the best and, and playing with it. So that's gonna be it for me for this video. Thank you for watching everybody. I'm gonna see if I can paint the eyes to give her at least a little bit of a, of a finished look. I'm probably not gonna finish the entire model for a while though. So uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.